Are you afraid to go solo wild camping? Is solo wild camping scary? God, oh, that made me jump a bit. Is it safe to wild camp alone? How do you overcome your solo wild camping fears? And what steps can you take to motivate yourself for your first solo wild camping outing? For many of you out there, the idea of wild camping remains just that, an idea. You like the thought of it, but the extent of your enjoyment is watching people like myself or my fellow YouTubers enjoying the challenge for you, which is a shame because you are really missing out. Although I try to capture the experiences as best and as honest as I can. I thought it was like a little bit of sleep. It's been sort of rattling on the uh, sheet. Snowing. As cliche as it sounds, the camera never really does it justice. Just open the door up to look out. Got a cloud in the sky. The stars are just amazing. Obviously, you can't film that on this camcorder. So in this video, I'm going to discuss with you some steps that you can take to make sure that you get out for your very first wild camp. Tips of how to become motivated and how to deal with those pesky fears that are holding you back. Number one, take the first step. As with anything in life, taking the first step starts a forward trajectory towards your goal. Nothing happens if you sit still. By doing nothing, by changing nothing, nothing changes. By putting off or delaying your solo wild camp, it only becomes harder. We are creatures of habit, and one of the worst habits we have is the habit of delaying. And the same can be said with wild camping. Second step, get motivated. One of the biggest hindrances for me to finally go out and solo wild camp was not fear, but rather motivation. It's easy to remain motivated when there are one or two of you going out and you can both G each other on and encourage each other to get out. But when you're on your own, it's easier to drop the idea for the slightest reason. It's looking windy. The rain is gonna come in. You don't know what to do when you get there. There's a, a film that you could watch on the telly tonight. I know that when Nate first started to back away from the channel, I found it really hard to start going solo, but I knew I had to. Having the channel was in a sense, my motivation. This morning it was chucking it, I was hailing this morning. I was sat eating a sausage sandwich, looking out at it, hailing, thinking, what the f am I doing? It's harder to motivate yourself when you're on your own as well. It is me. Especially for the wild camps. I could have done several in the time that I've sort of been waiting for me and Nath to liaise. Fingers crossed to do this one. I might still bottle it yet. But there is other ways to get motivated, like, Tip number three, start to collect wild camping gear. If you haven't already begun to collect camping equipment, then this is a great first step. And it's also a fantastic motivator. And let's be honest, it's as much fun as the camping itself. By researching and collecting gear, you will start to feel the excitement building. And then once you own a few bits of kit, then you are already devoted to the cause. There's no point wasting money on all this gear if you're not gonna use it. So just keep collecting and keep that forward motion going. Number four, watch inspirational videos. You can find some of your favorite, most inspirational wild camping videos on YouTube and create a playlist. I don't know, you could probably call it something like the best of summit or nothing wild camping. And then once you have a date in mind, just set yourself an evening or two in the lead up and just watch those videos. Watching other people enjoy the experience is a fantastic way to whet your appetite. When I was first starting to enjoy the outdoors, there wasn't a great deal of camping videos on YouTube. Not like there is now. You're spoiled for choice. But back then I was watching mountaineering documentaries. And I found these really inspirational because it helped me to understand what drove these people to push themselves out of their comfort zones and into the great outdoors. Maru, in particular, was an excellent documentary with the main protagonist facing some really challenging conditions and having to overcome both mental and physical limitations to reach their goal. Watching these adventurous souls hanging in a tent from the side of a near vertical cliff face, three or four miles up whilst enduring hurricane winds, it really helped bring me down to reality. If these guys could do that, then I'm sure I can endure a little bit of wind and drizzle up on Dartmoor. Tip number five, remember why you are doing this. Why are you considering wild camping in the first place? To enjoy the isolation to get away from the hustle and bustle, to relax and unwind in the surroundings of the great outdoors. 
to get closer and to enjoy the spectacle of nature at its best and sometimes at its worst. Some of my best nights wild camping, I have spent nights sitting out in the early hours in the morning, lying on a rock, looking up at this vast blanket of stars overhead. It really is breathtaking. There are also amazing sunsets and sunrises and not forgetting things like cloud inversion. The clouds look like an ocean over there. I don't know if you ever remember the beginning of Airplane 2, where they sort of mimic Jaws. You see the airplane tail coming up through the clouds. That's what it looks like to me. It's quite bizarre, really. We are right up above all that cloud. But even when the weather comes in bad and you can see these big black clouds looming towards you, there's still something awe-inspiring about it. And also, there's nothing better than hunkering down in your tent whilst the elements are bashing the hell out of it, knowing that you are dry and warm. Number six, preparation. By failing to prepare, we are preparing to fail. By preparing your trip to the nth degree, you are taking hold of the situation. Plot your route ahead of time. Create a checklist before you go out. Get to know your gear by testing it at home. Putting your tent up in the back garden a couple of times, just so you know you can do it. Plan your meal, charge any batteries, make sure your stove works, that your gas canisters are full, that you have a decent power bank ready to charge your phone when you need it, and inform someone else of your plans. By organizing and preparing as much of your adventure beforehand, you literally slash the odds of leaving anything to chance. You are in control, and this should help to give you peace of mind before you go out. Tip number seven might sound a bit strange for a solo wild camping video, but try camping with others first. It makes sense. I started out wild camping with Nath. So having that company made it a lot less nerve wracking when I was out. Also helped me to get accustomed to the concept of being situated out in the middle of nowhere under just a canvas. Not only did it give me a chance to get used to the experience of camping, it also gave me time to test and to get to know my gear that I was using. But perhaps you cannot rally up some company for your first camp. And if you have no choice but to go out for a solo camp on your own, then perhaps you need to, number eight, consider your first camp carefully. Choose somewhere relatively close to the car, so that if you do have to pack up and bail in the middle of the night, it's not going to be a hard slog and you've not got to go over too much dangerous terrain to get back to safety. As with my previous tip, being closer to the car also gives you the opportunity to try out your gear in the wild environment. You can test out your gear limitations and also your own limitations with that safety net of distance in place. Number nine, consider the weather and season. If you are worried about the limitations of your gear, then don't go out in absolute washout weather. Watch the weather and don't be afraid to change your plans accordingly. If you're worried about the long nights in the tent, then go in the summer. In the height of summer, sometimes it doesn't get dark till like 11 o'clock at night, and then it's practically daylight again by four in the morning. So you have a real short window of time to endure the tent. But if you are looking to go out wild camping in the winter months and you're concerned about what you're going to do in the tent for 12 hours, then why not consider taking some things to keep you occupied? It also takes your mind off being cold. Download some films, download a podcast or an audiobook. Sometimes I even take a book to read. This gives you plenty of options to help pass the time and also integrate your meal times within that time span. And that also gives you something to look forward to. But now number 10 is the one that you've all been waiting for and it is rationalize your fears. Fear is an emotion. It isn't a physical thing. It isn't real. It is in your head and it is irrational. So the best way to overcome fear is not to face it head on, but to rationalize it. Look at the odds. How many people do you know in the UK who go out wild camping? Thousands. And how many times have you heard about that wild camper who was attacked by an insane ax murderer or clawed to death by the beast of Bodmin? Yeah, that's right, no times at all. You never hear that sort of thing. For the best part, people go out and they enjoy it. Also ask yourself, if you are in the middle of Dartmoor or up on a mountain, then who else is likely to be up there? And the answer is going to be like-minded people. For that reason, I always feel safer the further or the deeper into the wild I am. Perhaps you are a bit scared of being caught 
whilst wild camping somewhere you shouldn't be. Well, the worst thing that can happen is there'll be a little bit of a confrontation and you'll be asked to move on. Or maybe facing animals is a fear to you. Well, in the UK, there isn't a lot of creatures that can cause you a great deal of harm. The worst you'll probably experience is like a fox stealing your food or cattle sleeping near to you. I don't know if you can hear that. I've got a cow lying out there next to me, snoring his head off. <laughs> Can you hear it? A lot of cattle up here tonight. Oh, sounds like one done a sh right outside my door as well. Also, reason with yourself that animals are more scared of you than you are of them. With any fear, there are plenty of ways to put it back into the box. And most of it is just by rationalizing. So my final tip is a bit of a bonus, and it's just it's obvious really. Take the plunge. Once you've had your first wild camping trip, you'll find that you enjoy it so much that your second will be a doddle. You would have had the experience and regaling the tales of that adventure to your friends and family will give you a, a sense of pride that is unbeatable. Even when I've camped in awful weather, by the time I've got home, the urge to want to get back out there and do it all again is just euphoric. I lived to tell the tale and I can't wait to get back out again. So I hope that's helped. If this video has helped you and you managed to get out for your first camp, then I'd love to hear below. And also if I've missed any tips or if you have any tips of your own, then please feel free to drop a comment below. Thanks ever so much everyone and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.